Hey everybody, I am going to try to do some painting today. You can kind of see the painting over there in the corner. That's sort of the painting I'm going to kind of duplicate. I want to make some changes to it. So first things first, I've uh, covered, oh man, I just ripped paint on. Well, I've got newspaper here, so don't worry, don't worry. But um, first I'm just going to make a sky because the sky is blue. Ooh. It's kind of a dark blue sky, huh? Alright, so I've covered the entire canvas with a thin coating of uh, liquid white. So that way, uh, it's wet on wet, the kind of oil painting that Bob Ross does. So, that's what I'm doing. We do figure eight strokes for a sky here. And you'll notice that, you know, some areas are darker than others. It sort of looks like it's half cloudy, right? That's one way of doing clouds. Uh, the other way which takes more time is to actually put white and then draw the clouds in the sky like that. At the bottom, we're gonna have water. So I'm gonna go left and right here, big strokes like this, because you wanna make it look like water and water is flat. So that's, that's why you do water like that. I'm just gonna have my water come up to meet my sky here. And it's okay if you have like lines like that. I, I'm told it's fine. I'm told the thing that really annoys people is if you start like in the middle there and you can see brush marks. So that's why you want to go all the way from one end to the other to get the water. So there we go. And then let's just have more sky up here. La 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 la. And there we go. That's a very fast way of making a sky. So next I'm gonna have to do mountains. Okay, so with mountains, I have to do a mixture. So there's like four or so different colors with these mountains here. Uh, originally you start with this like blackish mixture and that's gonna be the old whole mountains. Then we have a black blue to do the uh, shadow side. And then we have this uh, whitish gray. Is that a, a third color or a fourth color? Don't know, but that's how I'll be doing those mountains. I almost forgot my little buddy here. So if you want to uh, paint the mountains on, so you have a hard time visualizing them. There we go, there's a little lump, I'll call that a mountain. And then here's another one. I'm just gonna make big old mountains here, like that. I don't know if that line is visible on camera. It is, it is. So if you do that, it's really great because you get to visualize what the mountains are. You don't have to picture it in your head, you can see. The downside is you do have to paint over those lines, otherwise people are gonna notice that line. So let's see, I made the blue mixture and I am realizing now we don't put this on with the knife, we put this on with a brush. Well, I mean, mentioned Bob Ross earlier. He puts it on with the knife. He's really good at that. <laughs> he, he can put on this black mixture with the knife and then he uh, scrapes it off but I'm not so good. I, I like using the using the brush for that. Uh, Bob has a, a special type of paint just for mountains, which he calls mountain mixture. At least his company does. He usually tried to mix the paint by hand. I'm gonna get the paint off the knife like this. Save some paint that way. And those will be my mountains. I'm just moving really, really fast. Normally what I do is I take more time and uh, try to create the, the lay of the land. So like, hey, if this is gonna be the dark side of the mountain, I'm painting to the left, because that's where the dark side's gonna be. Whereas uh, if the light side's gonna be like here, I'm gonna paint to the right. That's one way you can do it to uh, emphasize, hey, here's where the, the dark and light areas are. Not only is it a good visual cue for you, but it also makes the final painting look good because the strokes you're putting on above this will be following the strokes you already did. And that makes it look nice and neat. Okay, so let's say that's it for, let's say that's it for our mountain base. Now let's get the next layer of paint on there. This is the one we are going to make with the knife. So I'm using a different shade of blue. That should help make it look uh, a little different. 
So let's see, the dark side of this mountain is like, was here, right? So I'm just trying to make scrapes here. Like that, and I know the super confident, really good artists will just do it in one fell swoop like that, but their hand won't be shaking like mine was. Um, they'll just go whoosh, and then boom, they've got a really good looking mountain there. All right, so let's try to get uh, the dark side of this mountain too. Let's make this one. Sort of like this, and you want to you don't need to do it perfect because you've got the bar the dark background. So if there's like little holes or, or stuff that that's going through, that's that's fine. I might be scraping too hard there. You could hear that scraping sound. And it sort of looks like instead of me scraping to put paint on, it was me scraping and getting paint off. So I'm gonna do another round of paint here. Okay, and make the mountain ridge go out like this. Looks really cool over there, doesn't it? Yeah. Instead of doing like one straight up and down line, you know, so I've got half the mountain dark like that, and that'll end up looking really cool because then I'll have the the snowy white side there to contrast. And I never know what to do with this mountain in the background. Like, okay, do I put highlights on there do i go like half of it let's just do half of it then and i'll just be a little dark area in between the uh various mountains and then i'll have a, a white side coming down here spinning around making a little smiley happy face and then this bump will be a little tiny one a little, little tiny area of dark so, last time I was doing a painting, somebody was talking about like ridges and valleys and uh, some other mountain terms, and I'm like, I don't really know that what what she's talking about. She's like, oh man, that one ridge is great. Or no, no, the one valley, the dip, the anyway. There's something about the mountain that she really likes. It's like, thank you. I, I don't know what part of the painting you're talking about. But thank you so much. Glad you liked it. Because I am just guessing. I mean, they, they sort of look like pyramids, don't they? It's like pyramids, and then we got a baby pyramid in the back. And uh, let's get some dark. Dark in that part of the pyramid. Hmm. Now I'm starting to think like this whole thing, this whole shadow, this whole mountain little bump here and then this pyramid can be the uh, big mountain in front and let's just say this whole thing here is in shadow sort of a shadowy background to the mountain and that was the part where you try to do like the scrapings I think like that just sort of smoothing it out. Let's let's hope that's good and it works. Now for the snowy parts of the mountain. I'm right-handed and I'm going to be pulling to the right. That's why the the dark areas I put on the left-hand side of the mountain just makes it easier because I'm all right-handed and stuff. So you just sort of put the the white there. And then you just pull. Pull very, very softly. There. And pull. And that just sort of, yeah, that looks better. Yep. As you can see, there's a lot of holes in the uh, paint that's on purpose it makes it look better that way because you see the the dark stuff going through i 
That's me trying the one fell swoop all the way from the top to the bottom. Might be easier this this time. So let's see, I just push and I'm gonna, oh, I mean that, that, that did nothing. Sometimes that happens. Um, let's try again, put it here. Just gently pull. There we go. That looks nice, actually, with the snow coming up. Let me put another one there. Eh, got rid of my hole there. I can try to put the holes back on, put the holes in. Try to get my uh, brush like that. It looks like what I did there. Kind of made a mistake, because I had that dark area kind of overlapping, so I could have done a like straight shot with the one pull, except we had that one touch of dark there. And uh, it's gonna be hard to get here. So let me use the small edge of the knife, like this edge. And then I'll just like pull up to there. Oops, had the paint on the bottom of it. It's like pull up to there. And maybe pull here. Okay, I'm gonna need more white. Let me get some. As you can see, the mountains are already pretty much taking shape. That's what just dragging this white stuff on it does. It makes it look like the mountains got snow on it. There we go. And don't be afraid to like get into the dark area like that. Sort of mess things up a bit because that was a straight line up and down. And so this makes the mountain more rugged, gives it a bit more texture. Of course, I've also got pulling some of the blue from the mountain in there, which is providing an interesting effect. But there we go. There's a nice rugged mountain there. Let me try to get these spots. And you can already see, you can see like the back of my knife is getting, it's picking up the gray that I was covering over. So you might need to clean your brush several times when you're doing this painting. Just like grab an old rag, that's what I do. Hey, guess what? My brush, well it's not a brush, it's a knife. Anyway, my knife, knife is all clean now and I can do another Run around a pulling. Let's see. Um, this area needs pulling. That, see that? That's just a white blob. It's not really enough space to uh, do that big drag and pull like this. So I'm just going through this several times. I actually kind of like that effect. It kind of looks like faded and misty uh, there, but that was not my intention. Looks cool though, huh, doesn't it? And I'm gonna do the small edge of the knife for this. So drag and pull, drag and pull. Kind of trying to turn here. But it's not happening. I'm also trying not to use my uh, arm to block the camera. All right, let's say those are the mountains. And those are good. Let's say that's a good job. There's a couple of other things we can do with the mountains. Like, I guess I could probably take another color mixture. Pull it through. It's like if I pull too hard like I did there, that just scrapes it and takes all the paint off. That's why you want to be very, very light, light, light hand, light touch when you just push and then you just drag. Hmm. All right, those are more blurry than I'd like to, but 
Whatever. Those are those mountains. And the other thing we could do is um, the, make a dark mixture and make even more darker in the darker areas. But I feel like we don't need to do that in this particular case. I'm just going to move on to making, making the land area. So I'm going to make uh, this area up. Before we do that, we have to do the misting, which is where you just sort of like do this. Just tap, 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 tap. At the bottom, and that's mist. There you go, there's mist. It kind of smooths out the uh, area. Now I'm told this is 100% super de duper necessary, and it looks terrible if you don't do it, so that's why I do it. Next, I'm going to make the land area. So I'm going to have this be a land area, and then this, like, more of a land area, and uh, we'll add trees to it. Like the mountains, what we're going to do is basically get this area filled up with dark. So let's see. Let's get it dark. Sort of using that blackish, bluish uh, mixture I had earlier. I'm trying to have it be mostly black, but that doesn't seem to be happening. It seems to be wanting to be extra blue today, which is fine. I'm blue, I'm blue, I'm blue Alrighty, so putting in this dark area, I'm going to have it come down a bit farther here on the right hand side. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, black. Let's, let's get some of that color coming through and not just blue. Well, the fact that the black was mostly here and then this is mostly blue-black, I guess that's probably good. It makes it more obvious that we've got two distinct land masses. You can also make multiple shades, right? So, like, take out your black, add some extra black. Or alternately, like, take out some white, add some extra white, make that one lighter. They sort of meet over here in the center. So, uh, do I want bushes? Let's say there's some bushes over here at the base of that mountain. Didn't like that area, right? So just, just cover up with a bush or something. And then this would probably be another good spot for some bushes. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go with that. Those are our two bushes. Great. So, let's add the backgrounds for some trees now. Trees are also going to have a black background, so you just take your fan brush, and where's the tree going to be? Well, I'm going to have one here, let's have a tall one here, which goes over this mountain near that bush, and we'll just do like this, sort of zigzaggy. I'm trying to make it zigzaggy. <laughs> like this. It's a little harder to see in that area in the middle, because it's right over right over a bunch of stuff. It's right over the dark part of the mountain. So it's not as obvious that there are branches there and that's okay. I'm told what some artists do is they just take their knife and just scrape that off. Just scrape it entirely. And let's see, uh, let's have a bitty baby tree here. Tree is very heavy on the left hand side. There's, there's no right hand side to that tree. Let's fix that. There we go. There's a tree. And let's see. Do I want to add another tree? Sure. Why not? So the thing to worry about is uh, make sure your trees are not all the same size because that rarely happens in nature. And they're not evenly spaced apart from each other. Because that makes it look like the trees were just planted there on purpose. And sometimes they are planted in places on purpose. Not in this case. Um, now, if I was feeling really brave, I'd put a big tree right here and I'd make it lean and, and cover up half the painting. But I'm not doing that today. Nope. Oh, and... Because this is a lake reflection painting, I have to add in 
like the reflection. So let's see, that's gonna be the water line. So I'm gonna go down. It doesn't have to be exact to, to match the uh, tree on top. And sometimes this upside down tree, you like it better than the actual tree that you, that you did. It's just how it works sometimes. Okay, so this was a short tree. And then this was a big old tree, so it's probably going to go outside the entire painting there. That's something you could do. I probably should have done that like right here uh, on the uh, far right hand side. Have a big tree which goes outside the painting. Like in this one, you can see I've got a big tree grows outside the painting. Those are cool. Yeah, those are cool. Um, Let's do it. Fine, fine. But I like this little area. It was so nice and cute, but okay, fine. It's going away. Now I'm just going left and right like a crazy person. Because a big tree. Like that, and then it's gonna be down here. Same sort of thing, except now I have to do the uh, branches in reverse, right? Running out of paint. This is why I should not have done a big old tree. <laughs> uh, paint did not have enough paint to paint the background for that big tree. All right, there we go, there we go. It always feels weird doing that. It feels like it's like, well, if I was just gonna, why even bother making that mountain? I could have just done this, black, 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 it's all black, done, the end. And there are some, there's some paintings you do that. Like when you're doing a black canvas, you use the, the dark, the black part of the canvas to replace these uh, darker, blacker parts of the trees and of the mountains and of the, the ground here. So next we have to do grass. So I'm going to try with two different mixtures of green. Uh, one's going to be green and yellow, and it's just going to be tapped on like this. Just tap it on. Sort of going over the area I did before. There we go. Now it's a bit more visible. Uh, it's picking up the dark from the background there. Hopefully the dark isn't overloading it. I'm just tapping it on. Oh yeah, I'm right. This is a bush area. I need to create bush shapes for that. I'll get to that in a moment. Right, let's get this tappy grass on there. With bush shapes, I'm getting the tappy grass on. Tappy grass on first. That's just sort of turning like a grayish green. With bush shapes, kind of do like this. I don't even know if that's visible, but I'm told that's a stroke for making bush shapes. So I'm not having a really firm, firm bottom there because I'm gonna be covering that up. With the other green, it's just gonna be straight green and I'm gonna use a, a different size brush. So hopefully that will give us a different effect but it's the same sort of stroke. You can see it's a different color here. All right. Still same stroke, just tapping it in. So we've got these two different land masses coming together. This larger one on the right. Forgot I had bushes there. It's sort of like that. That's like me doing it very, very quickly. You can even see the green is a bit more visible there at the bottom <laughs> because it's going over just the sky. It's not going over dark area. So that makes it a lot more visible and a lot easier to see. Whereas if I uh, paint here, you notice the, the dark is getting on my brush and now it's making it all darker which you can use 
Use that over here, lighten this up a bit while it's still being darker. Also, you'll notice I'm painting slightly different now. So now I'm using the uh, like entire part of the top, the top of the brush, rather than just using like this one corner. If you use the one corner, it gives you a little bit more control, and it prevents like the uh, paint from getting into each other. Whereas I use the the big one, and this is a big brush, so. If I use the big one, that's less of the case. Okay, there we go. Got a bunch of tappy grass in there. Next, we are going to paint those trees. So I'm going to grab the green. And then I'm just supposed to do the exact same stroke that I did when painting the tree. Yeah, here, this one, I'm not seeing that. All I'm seeing is a bunch of dark gray when I'm putting my paint on. So that may be a sign you're supposed to tap lighter or mix it with uh, the white, the white like this, because thin paint sticks to thick paint. So I'm going to mix my white there with my green, and that should change the consistency of the green like this. Now I'm being very careful. I'm trying to move up here. Keep that that green showing, but you'll notice it picked up the blue automatically. Here with the reflection, it's less, accuracy is less important, it's still important, but uh, less important. Oh, I just picked up more green from my palette, and that really helped too. Just going back in, taking another stroke of green, and then boom, all of a sudden it's get, it gets a lot greener again. Okay, all right. So with a small one, you want to do like the edge of the fan brush, like this zigzaggy that was sort of how I did it should have gone down to pick up more of the green halfway through there but I did not all right excellent might need to mix more white with my green here alternately mix like some yellow with the green that would work too and sort of the reason I pick small trees here. I could make like five trees if I wanted, but then that would take forever. That's just like a random smudge there. I don't know about that tree. That poor tree's had, had a rough life. That might be uh, might be so dark it'd be worth going through again with a different kind of green. Yep. Let's see if I try to grab more green here. You can tell that's going to be a tree, and I've already forgotten those those bush areas. Um. With the bushy areas, you could take like the edge of the brush. Or you could take a, a bush brush, so that'd be like one of these round brushes. And then you just get green. Let me just wipe green. Just wipe some green onto this brush. Yep, my paint's all dried out. That's part of the problem too. My paint's getting all dried out. Just go, woo, bushes. Woo, bushes. That's often a good trick to, uh, at the bottom of a tree, because you don't want to draw the bottom of a tree, right? So you just do little bushes like that. It would help if you tried making them different colors, like in this painting, where you know this is a light, this is a yellow green, and this is a white green, and those bushes are different, different colors. That's not like the best example. They don't look the greatest there, but that's an example of what you would do. 
Okay, now I've got a bunch of messy brushes, but I'm gonna keep going on with my painting. A uh, couple of things left is I'm gonna make a shoreline. I'm gonna use brown for that. So I'm gonna make this an actual shoreline here. So, and this is one where you'd scrape like that. Makes for like a, a just dirty shoreline, just lots of mud. And there's a lot of shorelines like that. Also a lot of shorelines with rocks too, if you really want to do rocks. You could do some rocks here, totally up to you. With rocks, uh, it depends on what kind of rock you want to do. If you want to do like a gray rock or a, a black rock or a brown rocks, I'm doing a brown shoreline. because that's just easier to just take straight brown. And I planned ahead and purposely made this area like this. So it's not just all one straight line. Let me get my brown on here. It's just like a little bend in, the, uh, in this river area. And if you're really uh, a perfectionist, or you've got more time, you go through with the dark, mix dark with. So you'd mix the black with the brown, and then you'd use that for highlighting. And that would uh, give more definition to your area. Yeah, it looks like I've still got some, still got a little bit of green here. I'm just trying to cover up with the shoreline, so I'm going to my shoreline cover up all those greens. All right, looking good. I kind of wish there was something like here. Something like here to really distinguish between those two tufts of land. Hmm. I guess I could just like do a thing of do a smidge of brown there, if I could. Nah, that looks kind of, kind of bad actually. Like try to scrape it out. That's another way you could do the the, the greens. Actually, I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah, add more brown to the green. Now here I'm just adding an extra bump to the land with this slightly darker green. Just adding a little bit more. Got a little hill. Little hill works. Now for reflections. I hope I'm doing this correctly. Two ways to do reflections. Um, they're pretty much the same. You go left and right. And the other is to go left and right with a little bit of paint thinner on your brush. So the brush is not entirely dry. You can see it's got a little wet spot there. Also, you can see my hands are filthy. I'm gonna have to wash them after this. But uh, that way I just go boom, boom, boom like I did when I was originally putting down the water. And that should give me shimmery reflections. Let's see if that works. Yeah. That water might be a bit too shimmery. There we go. That, yeah, that's a bit way, that's way too shimmery. Oh well. And then the other thing to do is do a water line. So we're going to go back into the white for that. And the knife. Just add in a water line at the bottom of this. Water lines tend to be very, very thin. So you'd like go like this. Go left and right. And there's your water line. Get more white. Uh, you want to try to get the water line level. 
So no like sideways water lines. Those look weird. Which is why I was supposed to try to make this shore sort of like a flat line. Didn't quite work. Whoa, I got a bunch of brown in that uh, water line there. La, la, la. Left and right, left and right. It's like a spot like that. You do left and right motions, sawing motions like that, as opposed to doing a line like that goes diagonally across the painting. Almost out of white here. Um, so let's see, more white like this. There, and you can use a thin handle. Almost sounds like I'm just sawing through the canvas, doesn't it? Scrunch, scrunch. Let's put another extra layer of white there. Put a white shoreline there. And if you want, you'd add more, you'd add water lines. Actually, hmm. Because that reflection line is just kind of, well, ugly. <laughs> Just that reflection. I'm just going to put more blue on here if that's okay with you guys. Just do that blue stroke again. I don't know if that improves things, but it makes it look different. Going to have to be careful around that edge. Yeah, actually, that's how you would do it. Um, guess what? This is a very, very blue lake now with only sort of reflections as opposed to a lake which has just, it's just perfectly clear and has tons of reflections because those reflections did not turn out very reflecty. <laughs> they were not reflective of what I was trying to accomplish in this painting. And so they're gone now. There we go. And that looks nice. Um, this area needs to be cleaned out. Probably needs more, uh, needs a new shoreline now. Yeah, definitely needs a new shoreline there. And then I'll add in my signature and we'll call this a finished painting. So new shoreline here. That would be a great place to put in like a gray rock to uh, you know, like, oh, looked kind of messy there. Might put in a big, big rock. Or alternately, you'd bring the shoreline down a bit. So I, I'd take the brown, move it down there, and then the white shoreline goes around it. There. Uh, something else, other things you can do with the painting is a little island here. People like doing that. Or rocks here, or bridges, or... Um, water lines, all sorts of water lines. These white things are water lines to make it look like it's moving. And then we've got little hunks of uh, moss, moss beds, a little island there. You can put in cattails. You could do birds in the sky, <laughs> all sorts of other stuff. But I'm going to do my signature here. I'm sure this video is long enough as it is. Making the signature is not very interesting, so I'm just going to fast forward through this. That way the video is less than 40 minutes. It's going to be about 40 minutes. So I am spelling my name. You notice I use way too much color on the A, so I, I, I just cross it out and then try again doing the two-letter signature, which is a lot easier. That's the painting. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed my little video tutorial on making this painting.